You know, part of the fun of gardening is not only sharing your produce, but from time to time maybe saving seeds and sharing them with your gardening friends. But you have to be careful. If you'll remember last year in one of our favorite interviews that we did in Ardmore, Oklahoma with Miss Louise Riott, the author on gardening books, she talked about Gold Coast okra seed and the plants. And she shared some of the seed with us. And it wasn't too long after that segment that we got a letter from a gentleman who actually raises okra in Oklahoma commercially for seed companies throughout the United States, which he raises this particular one. He said there's a little bit of variation. So what we did, we bought some seed, we planted some of the seed from Louise, and we have them in the same row here. If you look at them, the foliage looks pretty similar. The plants are about the same in height, but let me show you the pods. There is a difference. Um, this is what we got from Louise here. It's a thick-walled okra, which is very nice. The, the pod walls are thick. It's not very spineless, so, so it's sold as a spineless cultivar. But the difference, if you'll notice, is the ribs on this particular one. The true Gold Coast okra is ribless or smooth. It's also spineless. You'll see a little bit, but they're not very uh, thick, so they don't hurt you as much. And it's even more of a thick wall, which you could tell when we cut through that. So when you save seed, you have to be careful because sometimes you may get a little bit of variation from cross-pollination, those types of things, but they both still taste very well and have some of the same characteristics. Now, right behind me is some of our cucumbers that we're growing this year. You've seen us grow them on trellises before. We're getting a little bit of white fly problems and some downy mildew spots, so they're starting to go downhill a little bit. But these cucumbers are very productive, and they're a strange-looking one. Uh, and you know we're, we're used to doing that here on the show quite a bit. This is lemon apple cucumber. Yeah, obviously, it's a round shape. Uh, this one is lemon cucumber, the smaller one here. But they'll produce in anywhere from 50 to 65 days. And the more mature you let them get, the yellower they will turn. Now, if you'll look, and when we cut them open, obviously, they look like a cucumber there. They tell us that if you'll pick them a little bit smaller like these, um, you'll actually um, get fewer seed cavities in them and they taste a little bit better and you can eat them with peeling and all. So they taste just like a cucumber, they just don't look like one. And in the literature it says that they're supposedly burpless. Well I've not found that to be the case. They're pretty much like the other cucumbers in my opinion. Now one thing I want you to notice on these are the spines. And you know a lot of cucumbers have spines. Some are bred now without the spines. These when you harvest them, and here's a good example here too, the spines are very prickly and sometimes can even stick you, so you have to be careful. But what I want you to notice is to look at the spine color. These spines are black, and that really tells us something, especially if you're using cucumbers to pickle, which lemon cucumbers can be made in pickling. And as a matter of fact, Barb tells us that if you're getting so much production like we are, she has a recipe in the county extension offices that you can pick up on how to uh, pickle these cucumbers for a sweet pickle recipe. But back on the spines, years ago in seed catalogs, and we have an antique one here that Dr. Jim Moat shared with us from Asgro. It's a 1947 seed catalog, so it's quite an antique. But inside the seed catalog, if you look by the names of cucumbers, you'll see BS or WS, and that stands for black spine or white spine. And this particular cucumber right here was sent to me from Steve Lampson of Fort Gibson, Oklahoma, and he was kind of concerned in what was happening with his cucumbers here turning that orange color. And what this is, this is just an overripe or mature cucumber, which is a black spine cucumber. This particular variety is national pickling. And the reason for the spines is when they get over mature, they turn an orange or a yellow color. A white spine cucumber is going to turn more of an off-white or a very, very light yellow color. And that has to do a lot with the pickling industry because they go in and they harvest them one time with mechanical harvesters and they let a few of them get overripe. And for that reason, you can imagine if they used a black spine variety that was this color, it would show up that color in pickles and they don't want that. So now almost all commercial growers of pickling cucumbers have gone to the white spine versus a black. 
but in the home gardens it's still very easy to buy black spine varieties that will turn that color. So really it's nothing more than a sign of overripeness. If you get small ones doing it, it's because of stress on the plants and they're overripe and uh, really they're ripening up immaturely is what's happening. So you could still eat them, they just have a funny looking color to them. Now talking about interesting or funny looking plants, I've got some right here behind me. You may have heard of the uh, tomato potato plant. Well, if, if you're on anybody's mailing list, you're going to get some of these things that have novelty plants. And it talks about the tomato potato. So just for fun, we thought we would try to plant some and see what would happen. We got the plants in, and they tell us that they're grafted to a subarctic tomato and a red Pontiac potato. And if you think about it, they're in the same family Solanaceae, which means that they are compatible and could be grafted. And we've planted some, we dug them up there, the potatoes weren't very prolific. Uh, matter of fact, on the tomato one we hardly got any. The tomato itself is very small, not really anything to brag about. And here in front of me, um, there's a new one called a pepper potato that's in the magazine. So we got some of it. And you can see, sure enough, we have potatoes with peppers, and these are chili peppers. The problem is, think about it in Oklahoma conditions. The potatoes are a cool season crop. Peppers are warm season, so they come off at different times. Now we're going to have to harvest the potatoes, and it's too late to start with on them. But what's that going to do to the plant if it's grafted? You may be able to go in and pull them out without damaging the root system, but you'd have to be very careful. And those actually are pretty good size compared to the other one. So I think if you'll think about it common sense wise and it's a novelty, it might be fun to talk about, but I don't think it's really going to get much of anything for you. Now I'd like to show you some more traditional types of potatoes. You know, weather always seems to come up in the conversation with gardeners and the weather has really affected us, especially in our potato harvest this year. Our vines didn't die down as soon as they should have. so. We waited a little bit longer, now the soil temperatures are hotter, so we're having some rot. But I want to show you what we're coming up with anyway. Now most of ours came from Ronniger seed potatoes. They have a great selection, some very unusual things like the baking, which is one of their favorite. It's more mealier or meatier. Ours didn't get quite as big, but it's a good meaty potato, white flesh for baking. Some other strange ones that they have are called fingerling potatoes. We've got Anna Chica's Ozette, and it's got a lot of eyes on it, but it's uh, somewhat of a yellow skin, but not as yellow as Ruby Crescent, which has a pinkish cast of the outside, and then White Banana, which is white flesh. Again, they're all very long, slender. They don't produce quite a, a bit with us here because they're over 90 to 100 days in production, so that puts them later into the season, especially if you don't get them planted early enough because of our wet, wet rainy springs. Now, another new one that's being researched that we call our hair potato actually just has a number right now, NYL2354. It's being studied at Cornell University in New York. And it's a, a potato that's white flesh, but its characteristics are hairy potato, meaning hairs or trichomes on the foliage. And we shot some footage earlier when the foliage was real actively growing. And you can see the little hairs that are supposed to repel the Colorado potato beetle leaf hopper and the Colorado flea beetle because of the hairs of the trichomes. So, not as many insect problems, kind of a natural resistance. And that's just done with the crossing of a wild potato to get this one. So they're experimenting, and we appreciate them sending it to us to try in our garden. And it did pretty good, all things considered. Now, the last thing that I want to show you um, that's happening is kind of interesting in some of the gardens is squash. And this is zucchini. And if you know with the squash, they have male and female flowers. And the way you tell the difference the female has a little fruit right behind the flower, and this one hasn't even opened yet, where the male, this one kind of looks that way, but there's no fruit back there, so that's a male flower. So they're imperfect flowers. Now what's happening with this particular variety, the heat stress that we've had, the heat is causing an imperfect flower like these to try to become a perfect flower. So these are actually stamens that have formed on the end of an imperfect flower trying to make it perfect. So it's kind of carrying extra baggage. There's seeds back in here, but not up in here. And they're really OK to eat. You just have to cut them off. So it's just the heat stress that's occurring on some of the particular varieties. So you may be having some 
interesting things showing up like this in your garden. And don't forget to try some of the new varieties next year and check your seed catalogs for all the good selections.